since the Hot Wheels Crash and Smash bike came out in 1995, that does technically mean that Mattel had the first license for the Sonic the Hedgehog action figure. However, they didn't really do anything afterwards, and it wouldn't be until 1999 when Sonic the Hedgehog when Sonic Adventure came out in America, that we would get a, a second Sonic the Hedgehog action figure. That is what we are looking at today. This is the first Sonic the Hedgehog action figure, produced by the company Resource. Um, they had a website, Resource.com, but um, as far as I'm aware, it's been defunct for quite a while now. The, the company no longer exists. So. This is the 1999 Hedgehog figure. Um, his accessory includes this really nice golden stand, which is made to look like the Sonic logo from Sonic Adventure. One gold ring, and a transparent stand to put the gold ring on. Now, Resource actually did make quite a few figures in their Sonic Adventure line. There was, um, on this scale, a Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and an E-102 Gamma. Uh, they also made, on a 6-inch scale, the uh, Dr. Robotnik and Big the Cat. And, uh, they, um, they, and they made, I think they made some other stuff, but, uh, like Bendy's and, and I think an Amy figure, but... I, I don't know, I didn't, uh, I didn't really get a lot of them back in the day, which is something of a regret. Uh, although nowadays, the only one that I really regret not getting when I had the chance was the Dr. Robotnik one, because he came with a really good Kiki the Monkey. And that Kiki the Monkey was the first real Badnik toy ever made, and I kind of lament not having that Kiki now. Now that I have my big old Badnik army, I sense that I'm missing something. Alright, so... Um, for the very first attempt at making a Sonic figure, this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, he's about four inches tall. Mm. Just for comparison's sake, here's a modern, uh, Jazzwares Sonic figure. And as you can see, he's a little bit taller. Back then, they took four-inch scale to be literally four inches. Now it's the, like, the one-eighteenth scale. So if you multiplied his size by 18, he'd be as tall as a real-life Sonic, which means that on 118 scale, he's about 3 inches tall. Mm, but he's for later, because right now we're concentrating on this guy. Um, now he has 1999 articulation, um, although he does have universal shoulders, so he can put his arms out as well as moving them forwards. He can also call you a loser, because they molded his hand that way. Uh, I believe he has wrist swivels. Yes, he does have wrist swivels. And, uh, they made his irises huge. Those are, those are big. Those are, yeah, those are, those are huge irises. He also has his big smile. Um, when Sonic Adventure came out, they were keeping the new design secret. The only thing that they would show was his green eye and his big smile. And, uh, his legs have simple civil movement, but, you know, for taking on a running pose, it sort of works. So, yeah, it's a simple little figure. Um, in retrospect, probably not the best proportions were given to him, but I remember back in 1999 when I saw these things show up in Toys R Us, I, I just about fell over. I, I'm, I... No, I didn't literally fall over, but, but I came very close to it. So, but yeah. This was, um, this was a really exceptional thing. I mean, it, it's not too special a figure by today's standards. Um, although I think it's held up, uh, fairly well. I, I mean, I, I love the fact that he has universal shoulder joints. I mean, in 1999, when you were lucky to have five points of articulation, Having, having two more like this, like, he went up to a big seven points of articulation, and you're like, whoa, and then your head exploded because you couldn't comprehend that. Of course, that wouldn't be the only version of this mold to come out. Because Resource, they did want 
If they were going to do something, they were going to do it all the way. And while I don't have the 6 inch figure, I do have the 12 inch one. <laughs> uh, the 12 inch one is too big to fit into frame, so just give me a second to reset the camera. Yeah. And there we go with the camera reset. So the, the 12 inch figure is basically just a gigantic version of the 6 inch figure, except he doesn't have any peg holes in his feet. See? Peg holes. Um, put up side by side, this thing is... He is a beast. Um, I don't have Jazzwares 10 inch Sonic for comparison, but I do have their 10 inch Metal Sonic right here. And, as you can see, he is actually even taller. I think he would be an 11 inch figure. Almost 12 inches, really. Like I said, since he's essentially a gigantic version of the of the 4 inch Sonic, he has universal shoulders, which is really nice. Uh, he has... He can still call you a loser with the way that they molded his right hand. And he has wrist swivels and I think he also has ankle swivels yes he also has ankle swivels so you can give this guy a gigantic running pose and the way they naturally curved his feet actually means that he can look pretty good in that pose if you could cajole him into standing I don't know now, uh, getting this guy to stand would be a very delicate balancing act. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Maybe if this foot was in the back. It, it is a flatter foot, so maybe... Ah, there we go. Maybe if this wasn't a bed, he would stand a little better. Yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Genuine running pose. Alright, so, Mr. Gigantic Resource Sonic, which is, um, personally, my very first eBay purchase, because, um, uh, it came out in 1999, but I missed out on it. The only one I got actually from the store was this guy, so I always regretted missing him, and then, uh, a few years later, when I started college, at the beginning of 2003, I got my first eBay account, and one of the first things I ever searched for was this Sonic figure that I had missed. I got him for the price of uh, $30, which wasn't too bad considering it was only $10 above the store price, considering that it was only available on sh on store shelves for a few weeks and had been off the market for for um, almost four years. That wasn't too bad a price. Not sure how much he'd be worth nowadays, but uh, probably is worth quite a bit considering that the company that made him no longer exists. Um, ten inch gigantic twelve inch Sonic does come with one accessory. It's similar to the stand that the Sonic, that the smaller Sonic comes with, except it's very thick, and I don't think it's actually meant. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just kind of spoiled what I was doing. I don't meant it's actually meant for Sonic to stand on, because it's. This is happening. <laughs> yes, you are hearing recordings of Sonic's voice. He says three quotes from the Sonic Adventure game. Ready to roll, champ? Let's go. Although I don't think that's Sonic's voice actor from the game. Like, uh, you may remember, in the very first opening scene, Sonic runs up to the roof of that building, and then he says... Oh, yeah! This is happening! And then, he, and then he looks down and he sees the cop shooting at chaos, and decides to jump in. As for the third quote... Ready to roll, champ? Let's go! I'm ready to roll, champ, let's go. I think he might have said that sometime around when he was getting on the tornado with Tails, although I'm, I, I, I don't know, I had to, to replay the game for that. 
Um, I do know that the voice sounds a little lower. That could be because the batteries are getting kind of are are getting kind of lower. But I do remember that this this sounds like the voice that Sonic had in the in the old Dreamcast commercials. I remember Sonic had a distinctly different voice in the commercials than he did in the in the actual game. So I think they got the guy who voiced the commercials to put his voice into this thing. And uh it's kind of cool that that this was technically the first talking Sonic figure and I think it's the only talking Sonic figure. At least if, if they ever release one, I never heard of it. But, you know, this thing is so huge, and from what I can tell, this head is hollow. Couldn't they, like, find a way to put the electronics in here? I mean, there, there, there can't possibly be that much stuff in here to make the sound. Just put the speaker in here, maybe put the button on the back of the head and make the Sonic figure itself talk. Why have the talking feature on a separate thing? That seems kind of strange. But yes, this is the biggest representation of the very first Sonic the Hedgehog action figure mold that is unambiguously an action figure. It's not just a little figurine that sits on top of a motorcycle. It's not a token. It's not a statue. You don't blow bubbles from it. You don't put coins in it. This is an honest-to-God real action figure of Sonic. Yeah. And it's made out of the kind of plastic that gets tighter as it ages instead of looser. How does that work? And And that is not an opinion that Sonic should express. Shame on you, Sonic. So, this has been Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001, bringing you another blast from the past. And uh, we will continue forward next time with uh, action figures that came out when the Sonic X anime was the brand new thing.